Hey, it's Josh Hewitt, Top Form Fitness, and it is time to do it with Hewitt once again. I'm on vacation right now in Cuba, and I'm just in the little uh, hotel gym here on the resort, and a uh, very basic gym, as you can see. Minimal equipment, cable crossover, lots of cardio stuff. Only a few dumbbells in the corner, but you, uh, you gotta make do with what you got. I mean, making it in here to the gym every day to get in a quick workout. But today what I wanted to talk about was how to avoid getting hurt when you train. I know a lot of people who seem to get hurt every time they work out. And if you're one of those people or if it seems like every time you start to challenge yourself in the gym, you snap something up, your shoulder goes, your back is sore, your neck goes out, whatever it might be, all of us seem to have that vulnerable part, but some people seem to get hurt more often than not. And a lot of people use that as their reason not to train. So I wanted to make this video to share a few strategies you can use to stop getting hurt when you work out. And the first one is to warm up properly. And I've made another video on this, I'll link to that on the screen and down below in the description section. But basically, I recommend you incorporate a dynamic warm up and some core activation or some isometric exercises to engage those uh, muscle groups around your core, your midsection. Uh, just check out that video for a little bit more information on that, but warming up is definitely important. The second tip is to slow the heck down. The faster you go, the higher the risk of injury. Speed kills. Now that doesn't mean if you're training for Olympic lifting that you're not gonna train explosively. Of course, the type of training that you're focusing on will necessitate, will necessitate whether you need to train quickly or not. But if you're training for general fitness or to lose fat or to build muscle or just to get stronger, slow down. Right off the bat, you're gonna decrease the risk of injury just by taking your time. And related to that, we bring ourselves to tip number three, which is to use a little bit less weight. So focus less on the weight and more on the form and the feel, which will bring us to the next tip. But basically, leave ego lifting at the door. It doesn't matter what other people think about how much weight you're, you're using. It doesn't matter what number is on that bar. If you're focusing on changing your body, if you're focusing on physical change, physique transformation, aesthetics, weight is secondary, as long as you're challenging yourself. Again, if you're a power lifter or an Olympic lifter and the numbers matter, then absolutely you're gonna to have to challenge yourself with the weight, but it needs to be with control. That brings us to the next tip, which is focus on the form and the feel, the mind-muscle connection more than just the load alone, okay? The weight matters, but only in so much as how it challenges your muscles. And the biggest thing you can do in addition to how many repetitions you're using, how many sets, uh, and the amount of weight is the form and the feel, the mind-muscle connection, strong contraction, and focusing on the intention behind every rep in addition to the tension that you're using. Now the next tip is exercise selection. Choose exercises that you can feel in the target muscle groups. Again, if your sport necessitates a certain exercise selection, such as if you are a power lifter, you need to perform squats, bench presses, and deadlifts at some point in your program, obviously. However, if your training program does not necessitate the use of specific exercises, choose exercises that you feel in the muscles, not in the joints. Choose exercises that are challenging you where you need to feel it, where you want to feel it, not just hurting you or that they feel awkward or you don't feel like, for example, if you don't feel a bench press in your chest during the exercise or the next day, then maybe you should consider a different exercise, such as maybe even a slight incline or decline, or maybe we're using dumbbells or a machine is fine. So play with using free weights versus machines, barbells versus dumbbells, body weight exercises. There are many different effective exercises for every muscle group, so play with them, experiment, find the ones that you feel the best with and that don't hurt you. Also related to exercise selection is use exercises in balance for both sides of the body or train antagonist muscle groups in balance. So for example, if you're doing a lot of pressing movements or uh, chest dominant exercises, you want to balance that with exercises for the opposite side of the body, for your back, for the posterior chain. I would argue that you even want to do more exercise, a little bit more volume 
for the other side of the body, for the antagonist muscle groups in the back of your body because many of us tend to train what we see in the mirror. We want, we want to train our, our chest, our biceps, our abs, and we neglect the back of the body. So especially for posture injury prevention, try to train in balance. Try to train opposite muscle groups in balance. The next tip is related to recovery. You're pushing yourself hard in the gym, but are you recovering enough? So this would be related to adequate nutrition. Are you getting the micronutrients, the macronutrients you need? Is your caloric intake where it should be based on your goals? And are you resting enough? Are you taking enough time in between workouts to recover? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you taking enough rest in between sets depending on what your goals are? Also consider your training volume relative to your training intensity. If you're training hard as hell and you're having a long ass workout, perhaps you could just, should consider shorter workouts to maintain that intensity. So volume and intensity tend to be inverse, have an inverse relationship. Uh, this being said, perhaps a higher training frequency with shorter workouts might benefit you. The basic thing is you want to stimulate but not annihilate. You know, you train hard, but make sure that your workouts aren't necessarily longer than they need to be. You're not throwing in a lot of junk volume. And finally, one big factor related to not hurting yourself as much in the gym and preventing injury is how you stretch. A lot of guys stretch before and after training. So a lot of guys don't stretch at all. Uh, I recommend, strongly recommend you consider leaving your flexibility with your strength or your stretching work till after your workout. Do your dynamic warm up and your isometric stuff before, leave the stretching or flexibility work after, and also consider active range of motion stretching versus passive stretching. So passive stretching may, may carry with it a slight risk, increased risk of injury. So consider actively holding stretch positions using your own muscular effort versus passive stretching. And I'll post a link to the, a video on that on the screen as well as in the description section below. So do check those out. If you're one of those people that does seem to get hurt very often in the gym and you're not sure why, then I would definitely take a look at these, all of these factors and incorporate some of these strategies in your upcoming workouts. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, do give it a like. I'll be posting more videos soon, so make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. And until next time, stay strong.